You're listening to The Practical Wealth Show with Curtis May, putting you in the driver's seat to control your finances. Let's start the Practical Wealth Talk about alternatives to Wall Street. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Practical Wealth Show. And so I'm excited today to have a, a good friend of mine, uh, one of my clients, somebody I've known for, I don't know, about 20 years, I think. Yeah. And uh, so she, her name is uh, Focus James, and uh, Focus is a transformational life coach. And one of the reasons I wanted to have her on is that she's the author of How to Have a Healthy Love Affair, all right. Um, she is a certified um, by uh, John Maxwell, one of my favorite authors uh, in, in life coaching. And, you know, one of the things as we talk about the show, so one of the, as we talk about, you know, you're saying, what does it have to do with practical wealth? Well, in life, you have to have balance, right? And so there's four areas of balance, you know, mm-hmm. and so you got to have financial independence, physical fitness, mm-hmm. mental stability, and spiritual fulfillment, right? So you have to have healthy relationships. You know, you've got to have healthy relationships with your, you know, with your loved ones, with your family, and you kind of got to bring out balance in your life. So one of the reasons I want to bring focus on um, is to, is to you know, I want to have a conversation about that because wealth is not just about money, okay? Yeah. And uh, so you want to be, you can have money and be miserable, okay? Mm-hmm. And so I want you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Okay. And so say hi to the family out there. Focus. Hello. Hello, everyone. I am so grateful to be here. Uh, thanks for having me. And I concur with everything you said. I can, I can stop right here, right now. You did it all. That is perfect summary. No, summarization. No, no. That, that's, that's the intro. So, and, um, and I'm swear I learned some of that from you. So I don't, oh, I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> And so that's the side. So, focus. Tell them a little bit about your uh, your your background. What what yeah. got you, you know, into this this area? And, um, and then I want you to tell them, you know, how you how you help people. Let's talk absolutely. about absolutely, absolutely. Well, at eighteen, I got married as a Christian, trying not to sin, but I created ten more problems getting married at eighteen. Right? Definitely okay. did not know myself. Definitely did not know how to pick somebody for the next fifty years to partner up with and, and evolve. Uh, so that marriage quickly cra- crashed and burned in about two and a half years. It took us about two and a half years to then separate and ended up in divorce. Definitely good people, good guy. Absolutely loved God and wanted to have a wholesome marriage. We simply wasn't a match and neither of of us were fortified to have the kind of communication you need to have to have a lifelong partner. So that's a lot of where my passion came from because I believe that who you are and the way you can communicate is directly related to every area of your life. Um, And it just kind of manifests based off of your level of ability to communicate in that area is probably right around uh, the success level you're going to have. So that's where my passion came in to learn how to effectively communicate and create win-win situations uh, in relationships. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so you got to, I know, and so I'll as well share this with them. Uh, how did you get the, because focus is kind of, you know, how did you get the, the yes. tagline of focus? Absolutely. So I was performing at an event at Temple University. It's a couple hundred people there when I was a mm-hmm. college student. And the name of the uh, poem was actually Deeper, Deeper. And one of the members of the audience yelled out, OK, focus. And given how huge Temple is, right. several people started calling me focus as a result. And as a result of them calling me focus, um, I then next year on the radio show, I Name myself Focus and said, uh, Focus on Relationships. So that was the title of that radio show. And now at that point, now 30,000 people hearing me do a radio show. So everybody started calling me Focus and it stopped. And a couple decades later, it's on all kind of, uh, you know, government uh, licenses and everything. So I LLC'd okay. it and created okay. the Focus of Love. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So yeah. how, how do I, uh, so talk to us about, uh, so I want to talk about two things. First of all, let's sure. talk about having a uh, 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 when you when you say have a healthy love affair. Is that a yeah. is that a, a process? It is definitely a process. Yes, thanks for asking. And 
pretty much I was selling the value and I'm selling the value of being able to have everything inside of your, uh, the love that you have. You, we all know what that yummy love affair is. That yummy love affair is you don't stroke checks. You don't pick up kids and go grocery shopping. It's just passion and fun and dodging, right? There's really no real responsibility uh, in the wrong love affair. So I just wanted to put a twist on that. What about a healthy love affair? It actually was given to me for a keynote I was doing by a founder, Diva Girl, amazing um, organization. And she thought that would be a great title for a book for me when I was coming to uh, the event to speak to about 200 women there. Um, mm -hmm. And I just ran with it. Yeah. So the purpose of that book is to really allow people to see how can you have the love of your life right there in your home. Uh, we see all of those, uh, you know, taglines, Instagram, Facebook, all social media talking about having the love of your life. So the question that gets answered inside of that book is how to actually do that. What's the process that you can still have butterflies year later when the person is, you know, opening the, the, the door, uh, you know, to the house and you know that they're about to come. How do you still get excited? Uh, and that's what I want to generate, how to transform love in the world where you can have that fire lit, you know, in the 10th anniversary, 30th anniversary. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you have any uh, 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 tip or two of what people are doing wrong that they can uh, keep that, that, that love flame burning? Yeah. Well, I think <laughs> yeah, I think one of the the the, the tips is what you do. Uh, the number one reason most relationships don't work is finances. The number two is actually cheating. So people kind of rather that you cheat on them than be broke. Is what it what it kind of translates to. Okay. <laughs> and I just say that jokingly. Um, but seriously, I think people really need to take a look at finance. If it's that deep that a lot of people are getting divorced over finance, you got to educate yourself. We can't keep flipping coins and playing Russian roulette. I mean, I, I have to give you a shout out in this moment. I mean, you really set me up uh, when I sat down with you and told you what I was up to and was trying to do. You set me up in a way that I was able to be home with my mom for the last three months of her life and help take care of her along with my brothers. I would not have been able to do that had I not gotten, gotten the educational pieces that you gave me to feel free. I did not want to be, you know, sitting at work, decide and pay my mortgage or take care of my mom, you know. Right, so right. thank you. Uh, could you imagine a spouse looking at each other trying to make that decision? You can imagine some resentment and regret will be there to one another if that had to be made, right? Uh, yeah. Not being prepared. Uh, so life events will challenge you and, and challenge your relationship. And most of the time, the answer is money. If you had enough money, it would answer that problem. Uh, so it's, it's really important to get that financial education. So that's my, my, one of my tips. The other is you got to know who yourself, know yourself and feed mm -hmm. yourself, meaning fill yourself up so that you can give to your significant other and children because you can't, you know, drag from the reservoir of resentment and one more thing to do. If you're not filled up, you won't be able to give to them. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's probably the, just in the time that we have the top two things, give to yourself, fill yourself up, love yourself and educate yourself about money so that you can do what you want to do and not what you have to do. Yeah. I mean, you have to have, you know, I think freedom. So you're, you're not stressed out. I think one of the things that, uh, and I know you, we've talked about this, you know, people have to be, they don't use this term anymore, equally yoked. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. You know what I mean? And yes. I think that um, because, you know, just from a financial standpoint, if, yes. if you don't, um, mm -hmm. That is the wrong word. That's not the right, the proper term. But you know, you 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 know, you gotta make sure. Like, it's funny. And I went, I got married. And I went through counseling. Yes. I, because I had been, you know, because I had been, I had been doing the financial things since I was like twenty one, twenty two. I had one time wow. I had a guy I knew playing basketball, okay. and um, and I don't really go to no clients' house anymore. But this one I still went to see people, and they he brought okay. me over so that they could argue mm -hmm. through me. <laughs> oh, I've been there, done that. Well, well, she don't do this. Well, he don't do that. Yeah. I was like, you know, yeah, I can leave. So it was definitely the money thing. But I think <laughs> that, but when I, but it wasn't that because it was, it was, it was things that they were having problem with. So I mean, yeah. I was going through counseling. I remember that. Okay, don't I ask them these questions? You know, they can get yes. this stuff answered before sure. they hooked up. Now I don't want to mm -hmm. talk about marriage, but I think that you, to your, to your point, you do need to. Mm -hmm. 
deal. You need to have to like yourself. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And 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 uh, so, how do you talking about that? And and uh, maybe this might transition into some of the life coaching. But yeah. how do you to uh, basically keep yourself? You know, love you know, love yourself. How to build mm-hmm. that up? How do you? Um, help people on, on, because I think to, if you yeah. don't like yourself, you can't like you, first thing you have to do is you have to be happy with you. Yeah. And, um, and then you've got to be able to give. So if you know that uh, my pastor said, listen, your, your number one job is to keep your wife happy and her number one job is to keep you happy. So if y'all mm-hmm. both don't forget the number one job, everything will work out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> and, How about that? How about that? And I have a little bit of a different take on that, and I definitely respect your your pastor, and I hear a lot of people saying that, but I think that's part of what we're kind of set up to do that causes uh, the disappointment, because frankly, no one can make you happy other than you. It's actually a decision to be good happy. Good point. Yes, good point. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just like walking into an ice cream parlor, and I know it's, I, I just dated myself in an ice cream parlor, but it's just like walking into a cold... The mall shop? shop? No, just kidding. <laughs> yes. It's like going into the mall shop. No, <laughs> Exactly, right? <laughs> so it's just like walking in there and saying chocolate or vanilla. You get to choose to be happy. If someone, if, if someone, we've all been in that space when someone done something very kind for us, but because we were just so upset about even ourselves inwardly or our job, we can't even really accept it. We can't even really receive it. We got to take a minute and like, you know, I'm really grateful, but right now I'm very upset. Give me a minute, right? Mm-hmm. We all been in that space. So getting the fact that the other person really can't make me happy uh takes the pressure off of that other person that's the first thing but Mm. also it gives me empowerment that i get to say Mm, i get to say right Mm -hmm. so i get to choose to be happy in any and every situation in every moment we can look around the world between the rich and famous between the successful to the most failed people everyone has a story in their moment in their life where they chose to forgive or let go and still be joyous. Nelson Mandela, a couple decades in jail, and then came out and just was radical, right? And he was able to overcome. So can we forgive? Can we let go? Can we still love in the moment? Absolutely. It's a choice. It doesn't mean you have to dismiss any of your feelings you have in that moment. But what I don't want to leave people to believe is that it is your spouse's responsibility to make you happy because it's just not. What I think the responsibility is that I get to pick how my life goes and I'm the author and then I get to be happy and I get to partner with someone in that voyage, that journey, and we get to help manifest each other to the highest level of being, which is a right. different level of responsibility because we get to mirror off of each other. We get to help each other grow, which I think is a more effective way of looking at it because I'm not going to say everything that's going to make you happy or do, because guess what? I'm over here learning who I am in the process. Right. You know, right. it's just not possible for me that to always make you happy. such a good point. You got, because happiness is a choice. It is. And yeah. so there's no situation that happens is either good or bad. It's all on how you choose to react to it. And you so, you, it. and you know, what is your stimulus response? You know, as we talk about, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, prosperity, prosperity economics, and I would, a couple weeks ago I went over think. You know, mm-hmm. think from a prosperous mindset. You know, mm-hmm. you have to start with gratitude. Are you sure. grateful? Are you, you know, yeah. what, what's good about this? You know, so you've yeah. got to choose to look for the good in stuff in yeah. people. Yes, and see yeah. the good in people. That's a good I point. I agree. I agree. Yes, and and what one of the things I had to learn is there's a difference between reacting and responding. Mm. Uh, reacting is emotional it's in the Mm. moment uh Mm -hmm. it's just based off of something the other person did or circumstances right which can have you just in a whirlwind responding is calculated you tapping into your conscious and unconscious you're merging the two and you're actually calculating a response a, a, a thought uh, a word, a deed, uh, based off of your vision of yourself and your life and things around you, way more in depth than reacting, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and that takes, that takes training. So that's when people that are happily married and that have been together for a long time, they study these spouses. Yeah, I mean, it's work. It's definitely, you know, to mm-hmm. me, people see this stuff on TV. Mm-hmm. And um, uh I guess uh, we're, it's just us here on the phone, right? Not not my. <laughs> I was, I was um, what was I doing? I was at the yeah, I was at LA Fitness, right? So we're playing ball. So I meet these young guys, 
and this is like 10 years ago. So they're all they're now all in mid thirties. They're like 26, 27. So they're, okay. we're playing, they're making fun of me, you know, cause I'm the old guy. And so I'm looking over and I guess they saw me checking out some women on the Stairmaster. <laughs> He's like, yo, dog, I thought you were married. I'm like, I am married. And I says, listen, you can read the menu. You just can't order. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm look, I'm still human, but I said, yeah. listen, you know, and, and, and so, and so now I break something down. I said, listen, you've got to, you know, you, you, you have to decide that you want to be married. Somehow we went there. I don't know how that started. I said, listen, okay. I said, I love my wife, but I don't like her all the time, but mm-hmm. that's, you know, but you don't, it doesn't matter, you know? So mm-hmm. where are you trying to go as a couple? What is the vision of yeah. that you're trying to create together as yeah. a life? And you've got to focus on the big picture and you've got to work at that. So it's yeah. like, oh, I feel I love with this person. Oh, I'm tired. Oh, we changed. Well, no, you have to work yeah. at that. And so too many people don't get that. And they yeah. watch all this TV stuff and all this, you know, white hot, you rip your clothes off stuff. And it's, it's deeper than that. Yeah, and, I agree uh, a thousand percent. You know, so I don't know where you went there, but, you know. Yeah, well, where you went is perfect. And and I think that's also one of those fallacies that we fell out of love. Well, you could just fall back in. Right. Yeah, right. It's, it's really that simple. It's a process either way, you know. Right. And when I get that challenging words and people begin to say that to me where I'm talking to couples, I'm like, well, you know, what it took to fall out, you can fall back in. And right. then I begin to just peel back and ask the question, when did you notice? And what was happening and and they begin to peel back and be able to see what was the trigger points and most of the time is they don't feel significant especially for men they don't feel significant they don't feel appreciated so what would it take to feel significant and appreciated and the, the reality is it doesn't even matter what her name is he just want to be significant and appreciated so whether it's from his wife or mistress or the next woman if he doesn't feel that he still won't be happy so then that goes back to being able to generate yourself happy with or without them, and being able to get that from that significant other as well, how to get that, how to ask for it. Because some people just don't know what they don't know either. So are you willing to train, if you will? And, I, and when I say train, not like a dog, right? Because you hear some of those women, I train him, I'm keeping him. Right. I don't think it's that way either. But to be able to communicate and get that dance on where, you know, as the years come, you're doing a tango with each other because you know how to flow and excite each other. You, you can study each other and see what each other needs, the highs and the flows of relationships. And I think that's what's missing a lot in relationships, Curtis, if I can say that, is actually really studying each other. Why? Because most of us are in some kind of social media constantly, even across the dinner table, right? Mm-hmm, We're mm-hmm. not really spending the time to, to study one another so that we make sure each other is flowing. Um, and beautifully said what you said, speaking to towards the vision. What's the vision? Because if the vision was the marriage, it's already doomed. Yeah, right. but beyond that, because after the big party and the beautiful napkins, that's just the wedding day. Right. They, they focus on, 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 on getting married and that event. I said, it's not about getting married. It's about being married. You, you got know? it. You and got it. Um, spending $50,000. And I know people spent that and they, they separated 12 months later. <laughs> I, want my, I want my gift back, Curtis. Right. I want my gift back. Exactly. <laughs> it's like I looked in the catalog. I went to the store, got a rack. Right. Y'all didn't, right. you know, I didn't even pay it off the credit card yet. You know what exactly. I mean? <laughs> exactly. So tell me about, let's talk, let's, let's, let's transform. You know, yeah. it's funny because we can just talk about, you know, I have, folks, I have other opinions other than money. I have a lot of opinions about life. I hear you, yeah. Plus, the, uh, <laughs> the, let's talk about uh, your, uh, your, latest uh endeavor which was okay. the uh I, I know you just got back from the uh, yeah. maxwell yes um, certification yes. so wow. how will you how can you and will you help people uh uh with that and tell me what's yes. what's, what's going on with that and yes, and then don't forget, we're going to talk about your event that you have coming up for those of y'all yes. that are local to this uh to philly area absolutely yeah so the, the book signing yes october the 14th from three to six that's amazing going to my website uh the focus of uh to get more information about that i'm also looking for 10 panelists where well, i had four we have 10 mm-hmm. people on the panel that we're going to be doing questions to about relationships it's like a talk show kind of a setting at that last hour we'll be recording my first tv show so i'm so All right. excited about that oh All right. 
So if you want to be a panelist, you can set up an appointment and tell me what questions you would want to ask. and how Focus, you... fix my life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And uh, so that's going to be fun. That's going to be amazing. I, my goal mm -hmm. is that people meet their spouses there, right? They might be on their second and third date about time we get there. Because okay. when you get there, you get to get on the Focus the Love book signing page. So we'll be talking about relationships there. So my goal is that we strengthen, you know, marriages and, and people really transform us out of love. So that's the whole game we're playing with around that book signing. So it's beyond just the book. Um, and actually, my vision for that got enlarged by the John C. Maxwell event. It's the International um, uh, Maxwell Certification. So who was present? Almost 3,000 people from 160 countries. It was Oh, I did, every time we sat down on a meal, you sit at a different table, and it mm -hmm. was like the United Nations every time you sat down. People were from different parts of the world, everybody telling their story and their background. And I really got that, the, you know, there's nothing impossible. First of all, everything is possible. But what I also got uh, for me as a transformational life coach inside of love, everybody wants it. Everybody needs it. No matter how much money they made, what side of the world they come in, come from, uh, love is love. And we want all significance and someone to go home to, if you will, or to embrace. And of course, there's some people that, you know, not interested in actual relationship uh, as far as intimacy, uh, but they want the depth of the relationship with their parents, with their, with their business partners, with their children, uh, mm. with, with the people that matter to them. So being able to connect on a deep, intimate level, it just resonates with every human being, no matter what background that you have. So it just fortified me as a transformational life coach and my mission. I, I woke up 2012 and my mission was... But I woke up saying the focus of love uh, and really got that my focus was to transform love in the world. So for me, it, it, it was everything. Uh, the biggest nugget I got, I, got uh, uh, I upgraded my um, event by going to a VIP uh, event on that Sunday where we got to ask John C. Maxwell three questions, a, a small group of us, if you will. Uh, and I got to ask him about how he gets names for his books and his trainers and so forth, because I had how to have a healthy love affair. And basically, he said, focus, if you got to explain it, then you need to say it a different way. <laughs> I love that. Um, and, and at his age, well, he was always wise with like a couple sentence nugget too, right, Curtis? He can mm -hmm. drop a nugget in just a couple of sentences. He's well read. The man wrote over 100 uh, books. He's one of the top global leadership uh, uh, people of the world. Uh, but he also said, which, which uh, gave me a lasting impression was, it's not how fast, it's how far. Mm. It's not how fast, it's how far. And he said that a couple of times, which uh, he said it, uh, you know, like that was part of his mission for that five days, uh, 12 hour session. He said that a couple of times to really get people, you have to slow down to speed up, right? So you may achieve a certain place, um, but what's the depth of the achievement? And that just really resonated inside of me. Uh, so it, it's, I definitely want to help as many people as possible, but I want to get roots into each person that I help. So when it's time for us to depart as a relationship coach and a coachee, that this person stands bright and they're ready to, to fly and they're in their purpose and they got clarity and then they can multiply. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's what I got out of that because it, it, it's, it's amazing. They're only about seven years old inside of this new project of them having uh, life coaches across the world. And he's at 20,000 uh, life coaches across the world in 160 countries. So that, that's, that was stupendous for me. That was life changing. Wow. Okay. So yeah. who's, who's a, uh, if, if somebody's listening to this, yes. um, what is going on in their, in their world that they need to reach out to a life coach? You know, yeah. uh, you know, what, 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 how do they know? Hey, look, I, I, you know, I've got, I'm ambitious. I got stuff mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. you know, but I need focus. Why yeah. do I you know? What I mean, explain that. Thanks. Thanks for asking. I appreciate that, Curtis. Well, the first clue is we know successful people leave clues. And the last I heard, Oprah has four life coaches. Okay. So that's called a clue right there. So if that's you don't clue. have one, that's called a clue right. uh, because she was not able to manifest herself by herself. And that was also the other thing John C. Maxwell said. He said, you are only as good as your team, which mm -hmm. he said that a couple of times. And I thought, wow, he's really hitting that home because you cannot <laughs> succeed by yourself is not possible. Why? Because you can't see the picture 
you can't see the picture when you're in the frame, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to step out of the picture. You have to be on the other side of the frame to actually be able to see it. So that's what a life coach represents. That's what I would represent. So I'll be able to allow you to see the blind spot that you would not be able to see otherwise. So inside of your conversation, my goal is to ask you the questions to have your aha moments that you would not otherwise have because you would not ask yourself the question because you wouldn't know the question to ask. I know that sounds... <laughs> <laughs> I no. know that sounds confusing, but we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, no, exactly. You got to get out of your own head sometime and people, other people see yeah. what you don't necessarily see, the talent yeah. you have, the this and that. And, yeah. and um, so, yeah, I totally get that. And yeah. um, even if you know it, some of you, it's helpful if somebody else asks you, you uh, that. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, so focus, listen, so how can our listeners, um, as we wind down here, um, yeah. uh, get in touch with you yeah. and tell them about your event again? Awesome. Yes. Thank you. So yes, I'm on social media, the focus of love at Facebook, the focus, focus of love at Twitter, focus of love at Instagram. And of course the focus of love.com is my direct website. So you can definitely get in touch with me. Well, and I get that everybody's don't match. So I offer an actual 15 minute consultation. So you can go on to my social media and set up an appointment. Let's chat. Let me see what you're up to. And you can hear what I'm up to and my style. Let's see if we match. Uh, my goal is to be able to peer into your life from the story that you tell. And I'll be able to see the greatness within you. My goal is to help you see the greatness within you. And let's get all of the darkest spots that's in your brain that's stopping you from seeing that greatness out of the way so you can be who you desire to be, that you can reach out to your dharma so that you can die like somebody like Aretha Franklin, who has, I mean, geez, Louise, the amount of songs she sung, the places she's been, the people she saw, she'll be forever remembered. You might not have that, that biggest goal, but whatever goal, whatever nugget you have, we want to manifest that because the richest place in the world is the cemetery. That's where so many dreams have died and, and thoughts and inventions have never been uh, manifest it. And I want anyone that can hear my voice right now, I want you to live to your highest being. So go to my one of my social pages and go ahead and set up your 15 minute consultation. You purchase my book, it's only 10 bucks. You purchase my book and you get a 30 minute uh, uh, coaching from purchasing that book. Um, and you can meet me. Meet me on October the 14th. October the 14th will be right up here in Philadelphia at the New Covenant Church. Beautiful, huge campus. So uh, free parking. You'll drive in. We'll have plenty of uh, people letting you know where to go. And when you come in, it's going to be a chat and chew. We're going to have people all around writing your questions, your concerns down and put them in the basket. Um, the next hour, we're going to actually then do the book signing where I uh, sign your book for you and you get a Focus of Love t-shirt. Uh, and then we're going to slide into the audience um, style room where we record the first Focus of Love uh, television show. And the title is called He Say, She Say. And that's where we're going to ask those questions. So those questions you either sent through uh, to me on the social media or on that actual event, you'll be able to ask those questions and we can get those answered as well. So it's going to be an amazing night. It's only a $70 ticket for a meal, a TV show, a T-shirt and a book um, and an amazing evening. And for those that aren't already in love, I'm going to set it up so that you can meet your love there. So it's going to be lots of singles, about 100 people. Uh, so a, a phenomenal night. Uh, uh, right. I'm looking forward to really uh, blessing a lot of people with just dropping a lot of nuggets, nuggets to tighten up your relationship, to get you to the next level, and those that are looking for love, how to complete your past so you can get the love of your life. All right. That sounds good. Well, thank you, Miss Focus James, Focus of Love. <laughs> <laughs> and an author of How Thank to you. Have a Healthy Love Affair and Thank Transformative you. Life Coach. Now, as we record this, because some of this is evergreen, we're in August of 2018. So if you're yes. playing this next year, you missed it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just go but to my site. We're going right, to have something but, popping off right, right in. So. Right. so stay on the site. All the sites are active. And then what happens is if you're hearing this and you're in, let's say, let you, you can also fly in, but if you're yeah. in... You know, we're in Philly, you know, the Philadelphia yeah. area. So 
if you're hearing this, I know a lot of our uh, listeners and mm-hmm. clients are, you know, we've got people in, you know, California, you can fly in. But, uh, oh, uh, and um, thanks for saying that, Curtis. We're going to have a live stream, too. So you could buy a discounted ticket at $50. Well, you'll also get the T-shirt. You'll also get the book. It will be sent out to you, and you'll have full access to the three-hour event. So it, you'll have, we'll have a couple of streams going on. You can okay. also uh, uh, email beforehand as well as message during the event your question and concern that can possibly get picked and shared in the TV show, too. Well, uh, there you go. I'm glad I brought it up. I'm well, so listen. Yeah. All right. So guys, listen. So thank you for another episode of Practical Wealth Show. So we talked about today, we're talking about relationships because you don't want to be, uh, you know, I don't want you rich and miserable. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> no, we do know, not. And uh, so, you know, so here we talk about, you know, wealth and, you know, wealth is more than money. So yeah. thank you for listening to another episode of the Practical Wealth Show. And so we want to thank our special guest, Ms. Focus James. Oh, you're and welcome. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you. We're glad to have you. And uh, you guys have a great, prosperous day. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. And so this is Curtis for Focus. And we are out. Thanks for listening to Practical Wealth. To access the show notes and resources, go to practicalwealthshow.com. To get your questions on the show, go to practicalwealthshow.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before you make any investment decisions, consult a professional. This show was copyrighted by Practical Wealth. Written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.